Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, May 15th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast with a terminal length, episode number 648. Uh, and uh, I accidentally forgot to share my screen. I'm not sure if my... My uh, cohorts actually heard everything, but hey, otherwise, pretty good start. Gary, it's a continuation of our in the year 2022 <laughs> series. Last week we talked about consent. What are we talking about this? 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 Time? Uh, well, we're going to talk about voting, but I want to I want to give you a little kudos for that riff right there, like that that call out. Uh, because I think that is uh, SNL. No, who is it? Help me, because I know it's a, I know it's an older pop culture reference. Late night with Conan O'Brien. The year oh, okay. three thousand. Yep. Okay. I'm not sure if he still does it on his uh, was it TBS show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I where he is. Which right a, I think he's ending. Maybe. Maybe I don't know. It's hard to stay up on that. But anyways, uh, that also explains why I got it wrong, because I never really watched that show. But I was aware of it culturally like as a, as a reference point. So, yes. I mean, it wasn't intentional that we did two episodes back to back about in 2022. However, uh, there's kind of hot topic things that are going on. And um, so I don't know about Texas and Ohio. But this coming Tuesday, in just uh, less than 48 hours from now, 36 hours, roughly, um, in Pennsylvania, we are doing primary voting. Mm. And so given the leak, if if, if OK, so we're going to catch everybody up. If you are somewhere else in the world, not in the United States and or don't pay attention and somehow missed all the media attention. Recently, there was a leak of the U.S. Supreme Court opinion draft um of the case that's being presented in front of the supreme court about the potential overturn of roe versus wade which was the case in 1973 that allowed and recognized uh individuals have a right to privacy in terms of their medical care which gave women the ability to legally have an abortion um but now so much has been percolating up about like the impact of what could happen later this summer if Roe v. Wade is overturned with the current case that's facing the Supreme Court? And what does it mean for personal freedoms? So it really begged a lot of questions. Could marriage equality be ended? Um, what about adoption? Will the education of you know future generations become more polarized? Because we really seem to have bifurcated as a nation into this whole uh, you know concept of personal freedom and what that means. And uh, so there's a there's a couple of articles that I've linked. Uh, one is about the abortion rights groups um, creating rallies for quote unquote bans off our bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's also another one about uh, Justice Alito from the Supreme Court recently um, spoke publicly and called the decision expanding LGBTQ rights quote unquote indefensible. And so really the, the purpose of bringing this up is I think perhaps folks do not understand the ripple effects of what our elective rights are and how they can impact things and the negative side of that 
um, when you are not when you like maybe you only vote every four years for the president mm-hmm. of the United States and you're not necessarily knowing what's happening on a local level, what could be happening on your state level and how those impact other things. So that's really kind of what this was to be about. And, and to give you an example of like why this is important, because I just brought it up to my boss's boss, um, the the political landscape. Um, I don't have it in front of me. I'd have to look. Um, so there's a state and I'm think, but I'm probably going to get it wrong. Um, is maybe Louisiana, perhaps it just came up recently, uh, that it's been proposed about, uh, outlawing contraception, uh, birth control. And the reason why I bring that up is because I was saying to my boss, we have this new program we just rolled out about mailing condoms for free to folks locally that live in our County. And I was like, you know, I put all this effort and all this work into getting it launched and, you know, it's been decent so far. But my concern is if all this stuff politically is going on and states start, you know, passing laws saying you can't do this and you can't do that or this kind of thing. I'm like, what, you know, will will condoms become outlawed? You know, it, it, like, it what is contraception mean? technically. Yep. Contraceptive. Yep. Right. And so, you know, my my boss's boss was pretty good about, well. It would take a couple of things. One, it would take, you know, a new governor of the state. It would take because that's that's a kind of what what appears to be coming forth out of all of this is states rights that we are not a United States of America. We are 50 cohesive, you know, collective territories and everybody. Um, it's sort of breaking from like a federal unity into like every state is allowed to pass its own laws for its own jurisdiction. Um, And not, you know, be consistent across the nation. So that being said, if the governor and then the administration of my state decided that they didn't want to, you know, um, allow condoms to be used anymore because they would be considered a contraceptive and that could be a form of birth control and that's not allowable, then, you know, all this kind of stuff. So that's what I mean by like the importance of like voting in 2022 is to understand like as weird as it sounds and that might be a little far reaching. I don't know that it's all that outlandish. Mm. If other states are looking at, you know, saying that like plan B, the morning after pill, um, you know, just general birth control, the regular, you know, uh, pill that you take every single day for individuals, you know, that um, can be pregnant. I mean, it's it's I don't know. It's, uh, it's disturbing and confusing. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot. And it's a lot to take in. And um, I don't you know, to kind of simplify everything, I don't think we all have all the answers here. Um, but uh, Ohio did have its recent primary. I think May the second, mon- the first Monday in May, May third. Um, so not that long ago. Um, and I did go and I voted. Um, but I will admit, personally, I was a little laxed on it. Kind of, kind of, for lack of a better phrase, it kind of snuck up on me. I was like, oh, I forgot all about it, and and um. That's on me. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, we do kind of need to be listening um, and watching and voting and doing all those things because it is it just if this like recent, you know, the the Supreme Court thing is any kind of. sort of red flag in all of this is that there is a possibility that without a whole lot of like if you're not paying attention this could come as a surprise to you that this is suddenly on the um in their scope and what they're thinking about because you know Ruby Raid has, has been in the books for years decades and um I think if I'm not mistaken, it's about to celebrate it. It would have be it would be celebrating its 50th year um, next year, right? For for Roe v. Wade, yes, like that's one of the most um, significant points of interest mm-hmm. historically is that we're coming up on potentially the 50th anniversary, and then that may not be the case, as was yeah. quoted in one of the articles. Yeah, and it's kind of like, yeah, that it's it. It, 
it didn't surprise me um, that it was something that was in their, you know, purview or in their, not in their purview, in their periphery. Like it was something mm-hmm. they've been, you know, discussing or whatever. And this document um, that came out or whatever it was um, is also not a surprise, unfortunately. But I am appreciative of the um, people are are fighting back. Mm -hmm. Uh, People are saying, like, this is bullshit. Like, why is this happening? Whatever. Um, We we don't we obviously don't want this to change. And um, if you look at a lot of things, there are a lot of people that kind of agree that they don't want it to go away. And um, Without, again, without going too too much into it, it it is a matter of paying attention to what's going on, and it seems odd, and it can be uncomfortable, but it is something all of us will need to start realizing we need to do, uh, because if we're not paying attention, um, it's very quickly that something will change, and you won't even know what's happening until it's too late. Until it's already happened. Well, and that's that's the bigger concern, I think, of, of like you're just pointing this out on this episode is I don't know our listening and viewing audience. I'm not sure if I can confidently say that everyone's engaged in the U.S. political process. If you're a U.S. Um, resident or an individual who resides within the U.S. that has the ability to vote, um, you know, if you if you have that ability and representation, but. I'll be honest, like, you know, when I started my adult, you know, life and I was aware of like voting in that, I didn't necessarily engage that much. And it's become more and more as I've gotten older. And I'll be honest, like, it's definitely become a piece of my like regular life now in the job that I have. I work in government. Government doesn't necessarily automatically like make you political. No. But you tend to pay attention when you realize that your entity creates like rules regulations has to abide by them um that things trickle down so like you know the the job that i have is available through the grant which comes from federal money which goes to the state and then from the state to the local county and so like it's just a it's a heightening of awareness and now more than ever with these different items coming up and um more and more individuals are coming forth and speaking very openly and passionately on their beliefs about what they think is the, um, you know, their rights and their, uh, in some ways their responsibility, um, you know, to, to be bold or to take action. It, that's really the thing that I'm intrigued by, but I don't know, like there, there's so much going and swirling around about this whole leak situation. Mm-hmm. And whether it was done intentionally, uh, well, it was okay. Let me let me rephrase that. It was done intentionally. Nobody knows the motivation. No one's sure mm. who leaked it or why. And there are some some different theories floating out there. Mm. Regardless, it's happened. Mm-hmm. And so now people are aware. And apparently, some of the justices I don't know because I don't I don't know any of them. I don't know any of y'all and your lovely black gowns up on <laughs> up on the court, but. My impression from what media has represented so far is that some of them are really bent out of shape about this, like that because now there's protests in front of their homes and like, you know, and there's these things that I'm kind of like, well, baby, what did you think was going to (laughs) happen? Like, and and I get it that, you know, one of the most recent things I saw was someone making a comment about how, you know, someone said that, you know, the, the, that there hasn't, that the court has, um, this is one of the first times or something. Someone made a claim that this is one of the first times that the court is like out of sync with like the general population. And then someone, I was on Twitter and someone was like, um, actually, you know, and then they push their glasses up like a nerd and they're like, the record says <laughs> there have been several times that the court has not been in step or in sync with the major, you know, uh, polling of, of the U S or whatever. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's pretty interesting from that. And I, and I do think it, it's, an unknown at the moment as to what the outcome will be. And then the ripple effects of that. I think that's really what, what 
this is about is, you know, mm. what will we see? How will that affect our, our personal lives? And like you said, Damon, it could come in ways that we just don't expect. Mm -hmm. You know, that suddenly you find out like, oh, your marriage is now null and void because you live in a state and that state says that you're not allowed to, you know, be legally married because of X, Y, Z. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it'll kind of cause havoc, to be honest. Um, yeah. But we don't know that. And I think that's the other thing that some people have been like, a lot of these articles are kind of talking in a frame of voice of some individuals say they, they're sort of in disbelief. Like they can't believe this is really going to happen. Mm -hmm. And there's part of me that's like, oh, baby, anything can happen. Anything yeah. can happen. It is all possible. So, like, you could be in disbelief, but I'm much more of a, I guess, a centrist kind of like, like, yeah, like, um, if I can have pancakes for dessert after dinner, then the Supreme Court could actually make rules or decisions that impact my direct personal life. Like, that, like any, that's what I mean by like, I realize it's not a good analogy, but you know, it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's, it's possible. Nah. I'm looking at the live chat. Cody says it's always been an online meme to point out the potential chance of a slippery soap for whatever the topic, but for Roe v. Wade, there's a clear indication contraception would be next. Oh yeah. Right. And, and so I've been thinking about this personally um, in terms of, I really feel that we're at this, oh, such an interesting point, like, as Americans, about this whole, like, my body, my, my, my power, my belief, my freedom, because that was used during the course of the pandemic in arguments against masking mandates. Mm. Like, you can't make me wear a mask if I don't want to. It's my individual freedom. Like, you know, my body, I can do what I want with it. Y'all. <laughs> and but... I don't. I, I, I know, I know. And, and as a public health professional, quote unquote, you know, I'm like, mm, the public health kind of matters a little bit more than I think you're giving it leeway like it's like you're completely disregarding your direct impact on other people's lives by spreading disease and we have historically said over and over again that you can be held accountable liable for your actions against others that negatively affect them mm. Which sort of circles back to this because I think what we have not defined emphatically as a nation, especially in the realm of science, is where you draw the line in yeah. regards to Roe v. Wade about what is um, the beginning of life. a viable life. Because wow. that's where I think this is really getting into a gray area is that there are different interpretations at what point do you say that this is, you know, X, Y, Z? Mm. So, yeah, like, I, and I think that that's the, the, cause I've been thinking it through from my perspective, which I will admit as a cisgendered male, I got nothing on this. Like it is not like my arena. What I keep coming back to is I believe that each of us individually, regardless of our physical makeup, should have the choice to make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. And it, it, this is going to be a little bit of a leap of a parallel, so bear with me for a second. But when my mother was alive, because she was an RN for her career, we talked about these kind of things. And one of the things that came up was the right to end your life. And if you remember long time ago, Dr. Kevorkian was in the news and there was a lot of discussion about the ability to make the decision to have um, physician assisted suicide or the concept of like, you know, right to end of life. And we had these discussions about quality versus quantity. And to me, this is an interesting point to bring up because if people have individual power over themselves to make their own decisions, then I think that is going to be one of the ripple effects that will come out of it is to say that an individual can have that. Um, and I mean, the, the topic did kind of come up again with, um, 
Oh, her name went completely out of my head. Mm-hmm. The, the individual that was a patient, uh, Teresa Scavo, was that it? The woman in Florida Shivo. who was in a coma. Shivo, Very who was in a, yeah. Yeah, in a coma. Um, and, and those type of things. Like, and, and so that's, that's what comes to mind when I think about like the ripple effects of, of the outcomes of these things is, you know, what are we saying? What makes sense? Where, when, how do we, how do we define it? If we can, that kind of thing. I'll step back for a second. <laughs> mm. Interesting. <sighs> it is. Um, oh, it's so many things. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm trying not to, because like, I don't want to get into this debate on that topic um, for a long time, for many reasons. Um, I have personally been, I'll just say this, my personal belief is and always be that um, I'm a fan of your body, your choice. I hate using that buzzword um, in regards to this, like abortions and what have you. And I, as you, like you said, Gary, as a cisgender male, um, I should not get to say what you get to do with the pregnancy when I'm not the one that's going to have to carry it to term if you agree, you know, you know, I'm not the one that's going to have to Mm -hmm. do it. You know, I provided the deposit if I were doing that with women, which I'm not. Um, But, you know, that's it. Like, what you do with it, what you do with that is, I think, your choice um, for whatever reason. I'm, I'm one of these people that is a strong believer in, like, you do what you feel is best for you. Um, and I, it doesn't mean... I'm necessarily, well, I kind of am, but I'm not necessarily pro-abortion. I've heard this several times. Like, I just mean mm. that you get to choose what you want to do. Right. Mm-hmm. If you want to go have an abortion, then you can, should be able to legally go and get one. If you wish to carry the baby to term, you should legally be able to carry the t- baby to term. If you want to then put that baby up for adoption, you should be able to do that. Um, or if you wish to, you know, have that baby and care for it and what have you and do all the things that you need to do for the next 18 plus years, cool, do that too. Um, but I don't get to say that you don't get to do one of those things. Or any of those things. Agreed. And I, I would like to expand what you said slightly, just a little bit, just a little bit. You're Everything fine. you said, I agree with. As a cis gendered male gay man, I definitely have absolutely no right to tell you what to do with your bodies. And I don't think any damn other person does, with the exception, like when people were trying to go in with the, trying to use this defense for for not wearing a mask and or getting vaccinated oh. for the pandemic mm-hmm. is, since it's not going to harm anybody for your actions, but help you, go for it. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to stop you. Plus, like I. I can't, I can't tell you what to do in that case. Uh, it's it's definitely what you you would want want to do. That's why I'm definitely pro-choice. One of the things, I, the terms I've also heard recently, and I like this, is the anti-choice instead of pro-life. Mm-hmm. And I like that terminology better. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and I think what people are getting more around is is trying to think of is 
and, and the one thing that keeps coming up for arguments in regards to those who are anti-abortion is the where does life actually begin mm. um when when is is the life actually is now i can't i can't say um uh, so and and i don't and i don't think anybody's even tried to really figure out like where that line really is um mainly because it's probably it's too hard to tell like what are you going to do to try to investigate i mean do they have a consciousness at what point during the pregnancy? Maybe they don't have a consciousness until they actually hit that point where they're trying to get out of that damn womb. And is it the consciousness, which is the point when, when they, when life actually begins, or is it, as some people have said, at fertilization on that point would would life actually begin because of the the egg and the sperm? Mm -hmm. And it's because of all these theoretical things we just cannot find out. We no, we really can't say. And in some cases, it uh, preventing a child from growing up in a place where they aren't quality being cared for or, 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 you know, in squalor or, or whatever situation that may, they may end up being because the mother can't take care of it. And uh, for some reason they can't, uh, or, or they end up growing into the foster care, but, uh, or maybe they have some other sort of defect or the mother dies like uh, because of certain complications because of birth. There's so many of these different factors that at that point, because of this whole, we don't know. And because of these different factors, the best course of action would be to do pro-choice. Let the person who's, whose body is is being affected by this outside of the child make that choice. They take in all the factors and whatever choice that they're, that they see, let them make that decision because there's too many factors to make one ruling on it. Yeah. I've been trying to find, and I wish I could, um, I apologize. I was, a. Uh... It was a very, it was a very interesting like meme slash, um, uh, just post from someone that was then you know copied and pasted and everywhere, and it's kind of um, put it simply like, there are all these like questions and qualms when someone chooses to do to abort you know a baby um, or a fetus or whatever word you want to use, um, and it came to the resolution of like depending on when you know depending on when they when it has to happen or whatever for whatever reason you know it is a it could potentially be a very difficult choice for someone to make you know if it's a later term and it's a medical emergency um your life or both of your lives are gone essentially um um, it kind of said, you know, certain time, points at that time, like they've, you know, someone is, you know, already either happy, you know, if they've carried that, carried it that far, they've, you know, um, they've already started doing things, you know, maybe they've come up with names, maybe they've, you know, put aside money and started a fund or they've set up a room and they're doing all the things that you would normally do. And then suddenly something awful is found out and um it shouldn't come down to now you have to even though it means you might die mm -hmm. the 
infant also might die. There's a there's there's this whole like process there, and to force someone to not have that option, not have an option. That I think is the the worst part of it for me. One of the worst for me. Well, and what I'm concerned about is like the ripple effects down the road. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm obviously concerned about the immediate effects, but I'm thinking like. Where do we start drawing lines? So here's some hypotheticals. Mm-hmm. Body modification. Mm. If a body modification was deemed potentially negative impacting on the potential development of a fetus, does that mean that like that some things would now no longer be acceptable? Like say like, you know, implants were deemed, you know, a hazard biologically for a potential mm. for a potential future pregnancy Mm -hmm. so you're not allowed to have implants you're not allowed to have injections Mm. Uh, do you see what i mean like like where do you where do you draw the line on if the concept is is like we're trying to preserve or make viable the options in terms of roe v wade like you know that you know the potential for life i'm like okay but where 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 and when are you like deciding these things and and you bring up a good point damon about like you know that individuals what matters more the the life of the person who is developing the new life or the new life itself mm-hmm. and where does that play out i mean and and i i don't know like it's very problematic i see oh, yeah. people sharing things online about you know ectopic pregnancies and mm-hmm. um the difficulties of that and mm-hmm. you know what comes with it and the the hazards and the dangers i mean all this stuff and i'm just kind of yeah. like I have to... it's it, it seems to me and i could be wrong that a lot of the legislative stuff and and this is true across the board it doesn't matter what it is a law is passed, something happens, like a, a new edict, whatever you want to call it, that we have a new legal president, and it's just it's just a de facto 100% applicable in all situations, but nothing is like that. It's just mm-hmm. not that simple. No. There's always going to be gray areas in the in-between, but that takes too long. That's too difficult. That's too hard, like, mm. to, you know, cut out and carve out, you know, and, and like – recognize the one in a million, you know, whatever that could be an outcome yeah. kind of thing. So I'm like, okay, so what's going to happen? Is it going to take the, the, the spouse of a deceased spouse who was forced to carry through a pregnancy and then they died because mm-hmm. of that forced like legal situation? Are they going to take the U S government to court and sue them for homicide? Mm. Like, you know, causing their spouse to die because there was no other legal, like, you know, medical recourse. I don't know. Like, I, I realize it's, it's pretty dramatic, but th- my point is, is that we're, we're in a strange land of a lot of undefined things. And it seems that people really have, you know, some specific uh, perspectives. And I'm kind of thinking, yeah, but where do we draw the line? Like, I don't really have a, a this is a horrible analogy. I don't have a dog in this fight. Like, you know, I have I have an opinion, I have a voice, but this isn't an immediate thing affecting me. But if, as you know, it has been said by Justice Alito that the court is expounding on the original intentions and is like reading in between the lines and saying things that weren't actually there, I'm like, okay, have apparently we're we're not allowed to evolve. We're not allowed mm, to mm. adopt and modify as we go along because, baby, that's kind of what the scientific method is about. Like, I don't know if you're familiar with that, and maybe you should. <clears throat> but, you know, you 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 hypothesize, you put forth a theory, a premise, a concept until something comes along and then you go, oh, you know what? We'll probably need to look again at that or reconsider it. And then decide whether or not that's a good thing. Because, I mean, this is this is the thing that's problematic for me is I'm like, OK, so if Roe v. Wade, you know, gets overturned and then we start looking at marriage equality, it's like not just LGBTQ, you know, legal marriages. What about individuals that are in interracial marriages? Are we going to roll that back? Like, are we going to say that that wasn't technically intended in the Constitution when it was written? 
are we going to take yeah. back like women's rights altogether because they weren't actually technically recognized in the constitution like that's what i mean is i'm kind of like mm. yeah it, it becomes it becomes a very slippery slope and we have we have seen it and you we have seen it and we've been talking about it and for to be blunt a lot of us have been talking about it since 2016 um but you know like there's this whole what happens next a domino effect as i don't like using yeah domino right. kind of as the, the term but like it's going to start here and it's going to keep going you know it's very easy and it sounds weird but it's very easy to make the leaps i know people think it's crazy that oh well they took they're they're doing this well they're not going to do that because that would be odd and wrong and silly and stupid and yada yada, yada. no it absolutely can and will happen. And that's why I think people are concerned and worried and afraid. Mm -hmm. Jim and I had a very, had a brief conversation um, recently because we've all we've been talking about it for a little while. You know, we, we just got engaged. So we're having that conversation. Like, do we get married now? And then do a celebration later mm -hmm. because we'd rather have it happen now as opposed to it not being able to happen at all. It's a conversation that we are, to be blunt, being forced to have because of how the ripple effects can ripple. Right. And and so it brings up interesting points of like who 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 is now put on like the decision making process i guess the, i didn't want to say this word but it really comes down to burden you know mm -hmm. that, that now you have to have discussions have conversations think about things that you weren't necessarily thinking about before and what i find interesting about this is this argument like the, the this perspective is a bit skewed in my personal opinion and i will own that i you know i am a progressive individual so i think of it from this standpoint where is where are the laws and the regulations and that stuff on on what men do with their bodies? Like, are we going to start outlawing vasectomies? Mm. I'd like to understand that. Oh, by the way, uh, vasectomies are for an contraception. Yeah, but that's what we mean. Like, imagine mm. being told like we're, that. That's the the the. Well, he, here here's one of the kind of the point I'm trying to make in regards to that is is that. They're like, well, we're going to outlaw if they move on to uh, forms of contraception. By the way, uh, uh, you can't get snipped anymore. And you're going to be responsible for a baby. You might be held responsible for being the father of a baby you didn't want to care for because you didn't get snipped. Right. But here's my counterbalance. And then you also did not wear a condom and then there's all these sorts of things that are happening, which Right. Yeah. But here's my counterbalance to that, Jeff, is like here's my thing is baby, we have such a broken system as it is right now. All of these like children that have been born, all of these babies that have come into the world, we don't even have the system down yet on holding both partners equally accountable in the raising of the child. Mm, that's true. So we just want to add more to that problem area. I don't know if that's necessarily a proper solution. <laughs> I mean, David, David Stern, Stern T, or he thinks I'm Stern T. I'm just saying. And then know. the laws would swing that way. Then we'll be like, like, wait a minute, are we supposed to have equal rights? What are uh, blah 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 yeah, blah? Yeah, I blah, I, blah. I bet if if someone, it's just going to cause more problems. Yeah, if someone progressive. Mm -hmm put out there that they want to put a law in that would ban um, vasectomies. Mm -hmm. People, would, men would lose their shit. And they'd be like, well, but you want, you want this. You want to do this. So equal rights, we should be able to do this. Yeah, again, as I said, uh, uh, vasectomies are a form of contraception. What you gonna do? Right, it's like, you know, are you are you gonna um, outlaw DNCs? Are you gonna, like, you know, 
are you going to out because it's a medical procedure for women and in and in quite a fair number of women that I know personally, my understanding is it was done pre, like not because of pregnancy potential issues. It was just a medical necessity. But some could interpret it in a certain way to say that it has something to do with the potential for forming life. And so, therefore, it should also be outlawed. Like yeah. that—that's the—that's the part where I'm like, I think things get a little murky, mm -hmm. not a not a little a lot. Um, I want to yeah. go back to the, to the live chat because I don't want to ignore it. Um, you know, Cody had asked earlier, what is your guys' opinion on having public protests in front of judges' personal homes? And there's been some comments about it, um, kind of on on both sides of you know whether or not it should be allowed. Because what it comes down to is, it's like, well, what's as the saying goes, what's what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Like if if you can do it, you know, on one side, you can do it on the other side. Um, and I think it's interesting, you know, Cody said, I think people should consider the implications for the type of activism, um, especially if it is against a Supreme Court judge. I think activism in general can be a good thing, but I do not disagree with the the equ the equity issue that it could be on the other side as well. Because I was thinking mm -hmm. about that. I was like, you know, if someone didn't like what I was doing for my job and they suddenly decided to pick it outside of my home, how would I feel about that? I don't think I'd be all that thrilled about it. But some might turn around and say, but you took that job. Like, that comes with the territory. Yeah. That's kind of like telling celebrities, you know, people that we put on a pedestal, yes, but you're famous. That comes with the territory. Like, you have to be, you have to just accept that's what it is. Mm. True. I, 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 I would, based off of that, I would definitely say, let's leave their homes. Yeah. Leave, I'm... Let's leave their homes out of it, but place of work, you know, basically where they, where these things are affected. Uh, sure. If they end up working well, from home, then that's going to turn into a whole other caboodle, kit and caboodle. Then it's like, well, we're actually doing your workplace. Which I will kind know. of put it like this. Mm -hmm. Places of business, quote unquote, most of them are public places, mm -hmm. quote unquote. Right. Therefore, public has access to them. Your home is your home. It's a private, your private home, what have you. If you, I... Because we've seen the opposite, like especially here in Ohio, uh, when the whole um, shutdowns and COVID and all that stuff happened, and we had that um, her name just left my head. Oh, what was her name? Doctor Amy something. Oh, it just left my head. Anyway, but we were having the, you know, she was the one that was kind of helping guide the state and our governor in regard uh, about protocols for, um, for COVID and everything. Mm -hmm. And people protested in front of her home. And were, I, I, I'll keep it at that because I, I, everything else will essentially be forced. I just know that they were protesting in her home, front of her home. Mm -hmm. And the governor kind of was like, oh, no, you don't. Don't you fucking do that. Like, hell to the no. Like, I mean, I'm being... I'm parsing words. Paraphrasing. Right, right. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, that's that's kind of what it was what was going on. And I agree. It's going, you know, it's going because there are potentially other people besides the person, the government official or whoever or the Supreme Court justice in that home. Family members, friends, people who are not um, the ones making the decision, but are just part of the family that are quote unquote innocent. Um, mm -hmm. Like with the doctor, she had children as an example. Um, so I agree. I don't think we should put the protest in people's homes. Businesses, yes. You know, public places, public spaces where you know, that kind of thing can happen. Absolutely. Um, it'd be I, like, it'd be like people walking, like you, like it'd be like people walking down this street that I live on and coming to someone's home here to protest something random. Like, eh. but the, but the thing is, that's a play the opposite Damon though. I'm like, but a street, a street is a public space. 
Mm-hmm. They're not on your property. They're not in your driveway. They're not in your yard. They're in a public space. And unless you have the privilege to live in a gated community where they can't gain access to you, mm-hmm. then should they not have the ability and the right to be in that public space? I'm not saying I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying like I can see where you know legally it stands that they I can mean, do that. And and we know that they're they're doing it. Mm-hmm. We already know that that is happening. It's not. It's just. Is it? Is it cool? Is it? You know, like I don't think it. I don't. I don't know if it's illegal. I don't think it is. Kind of giving your your example, it probably isn't. Depending on where they are and what they're doing, the minute they step into a certain space, maybe it does become an issue. Mm. Um, there's the whole. Whew, whole potentiality of, of something going really bad really quickly in those kind of issues in those kind of spaces if something if someone were to take certain rules and laws that are already in place um to the to the letter and the minute you step on my property you're trespassing and therefore you may be subject to whatever i do when you're trespassing on my property or whatever someone does when you're trespassing on their property mm. um there's a whole possibility potentiality of that so um again i can't disagree with you i think more along the lines i'm not thinking more in line i'm not thinking along the legal lines of things because mm-hmm. legality is murky and sways to a certain dynamic um uh so I don't disagree with you. I do, however, think that beyond legal, there's a, and I hate using this word, but there's a morality to what you do and when you do it and how that could potentially affect. Right. Um, I, I think the, the reality is, is that there's a time and a place to make your voice known. And I'm not saying that protests should not be done because I've mm, actually participated, right. but I have not protested at a person's residence. Mm-hmm. I've never felt so impassioned that I need to go to someone's home in a public space off property by merely feet <laughs> to like mm. protest. Maybe I will someday. I don't know. Um, the The reality is, is that I use like, other avenues to make my voice known obviously this podcast is one of them um (laughs) you know we we do that here and we have the ability you know um within legal parameters to you know to vote and the the purpose of this podcast episode was really to like kind of shed light on well we might not necessarily think that these things that are happening directly affect us because we are not the, the, you know, the party or the audience that's going to um, face immediate effect. It isn't to say that it isn't going to affect our lives. Like that, that's the one thing I'm thinking about is like, do, do, uh, do y'all not have women in your lives? <laughs> like, have you not talked to them? Have you not asked them about this concept and this idea, like being forced to carry a pregnancy they don't want to carry? Um, you know, cause, cause, What's odd to me about it is, <laughs> I'm like, so what we really are bringing into focus is like your personal responsibilities for your actions. Mm. Because if we're if we're talking about, you know, like women should not be having like, I shouldn't say it this way, individuals should not be having sex if they don't want to procreate. Okay. Like that's really kind of what it comes down to. Ultimately, from a from a certain point of view, I realize that's that's the end goal is you should not be having sex because the potential of procreation is the outcome. And that's what sex should be for, quote unquote. <laughs> so okay. Is that where it's gonna end though? Like, or are we going to start getting into, like, amorality issues about, you know, people having sexual activity that has nothing to do with procreation? Procreation could not happen. It is not biologically possible. But you don't care for that either? Mm. 
Is that going to be something else that comes up on the docket later? Is that going to be something that that a person introduces that is put into office? And, we don't know. Conservative male political people have not been the best to know about having sex for fun over procreation. So hypocrisy is abound in politics. I think the difficulty is, is like having a strength of conviction in your personal beliefs and being willing to represent others, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, and then going about that process. Um, like this is this is kind of one of the things I've talked about several times in my life of late. I'm like, you could not pay me enough to do certain things, to be certain people like and like this is this is bringing that to light i'm like mm -mm, i am not interested in politics like i am interested on an individual level but i am not interested in like being someone out there representing a whole group of people in an office of candidacy or whatever because i don't i don't have the tolerance or enough patience within my personal well to deal with individuals feeling like i'm not representing them correctly even though the majority did feel that way that's just me personally Mm. <laughs> I'm, ready, I'm ready to catch up on the chat oh it says you're trying to rationalize the conservative mindset uh, th that is not my intent <laughs> they may come across that way I'm just saying like sometimes it's diff um, it's yeah you know, we can't rationalize the conservative mindset that they're insane already I, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, now listen. <laughs> I don't. Okay, fine. They're not insane. Okay, fine, fine. We'll, 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 right. we'll. Right. They don't legally met, meet the definition. Yeah. Is, I, I can have a difference of opinion with a person and still get along with them. Yeah. I work with them. Like that's that's the reality of life. You know, I probably have neighbors that I do not necessarily um, get along with. Look, it's the magical disappearing David Knack. Um, anyways. <laughs> and yet at the same time, like that's the, the thing I, I appreciate about living in, in our quote unquote democratic, you know. Uh, I didn't mean to snicker there. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to choose my words carefully, but that's that's the word, you know, like it's a democratic process. It's a democratic, like, you know, country that we live in that you have the ability to have your individual opinion your individual rights like you know to that opinion um and you don't necessarily have to agree the thing that this job has taught me more than anything is is like i had an expectation that individuals in certain positions had a had a specific um i don't know how to explain it like they had uh I don't know if I want to say credentials. They had experiences. Like they had like certain things about them before they obtained that position. And then pretty quickly on, I was like, oh, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. These are, they are no different than my neighbors. Like they are just people mm -hmm. and they're just going about their lives. And like the thing that I kind of keep coming back to is <laughs> that. Um, which is something prior, long before I had this position, when I worked in my um, earliest career in uh, hospitality management, I remember like everybody was like kind of freaking out because the governor, or recently f uh, was governor, now former governor, had come to the establishment with their family, and and like everybody around was all about, oh, 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 you know, that we were having this high profile individual coming, and I was non nonplussed, non phased, couldn't care. And I got chastised by the owners about how I didn't seem to think it was a big deal. And I was like, why should it be a big deal? And they're like, well, you know, they're an important individual. And I was like, no, they're an important individual because we make them important. <laughs> David, the look on your face. And so, you know, my direct boss was like, excuse me? And I was like, what? I was like, so what? Like, yeah, they had a, like, they, they were voted into a position. They were given that, you know, this, that. I was like, and? And, and they just were, they were really, I think, put off or, or put out that I wasn't, I guess, 
uh, behaving a certain way, like I was impressed or whatever. And ultimately, this is what I said to them. I was like, you know what it comes down to? I was like, if both of us walk into this bathroom, this restroom and this establishment at the same time, do you know what the difference between the two of us is? Nothing. First, I got to take a shit. <laughs> that's it, David. Like, that's what it goes down to. Like, there you go. You're a human being. Yeah. Like, I, I... Oh, Lord. I could... Mm. Now, I will admit, sometimes that seems difficult to comprehend. When mm-hmm. you're looking at someone or you learn things about them and you're like, what? You think what? You do what? Mm. Oh, okay. If that works for you, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> you do you, boo-boo. But, like, I just... it. <sighs> to try and bring it to, yeah, it's like at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're haters, like we're all human and we all need to express, we can all, we all have an ability and quote unquote freedom to express our feelings and beliefs and whatever, even if they're wrong, are incorrect, are based in ignorance um to kind of simplify it uh but one way to fight some of these issues and fight some of the things that are going on is to express that ability especially here in the united states to vote you know the the people that are in office are meant to represent your voice um, is that always the case? No. Um, but for the, that's the point of it, essentially, is these people are the person that you're voting for, whoever they may be, is someone that you believe will represent your voice to the government of the country or the leadership of the country or leadership of your city, your leadership of your state or whatever. Um, politics aside, um, it's difficult, I think, to cut through some of the crap to find a real person. And unfortunately, we know that people can be easily swayed one way or another, you know, and we all know money is a big factor in that. Um, Money talks, corporations talk. Um, Unfortunately, religion, for some reason, talks and has a say in certain things. So you have to make personal choices and decide look up the information and find the information and make those decisions for someone who you wish to represent you. And if you don't do that, like I will own, um, I didn't start voting until I was in college. Um, and I'm not talking like when I turned 18, cause I turned 18 while I was still in high school, but it wasn't until I want to say 2000, if not 2002. No, it had to have been 2000 that I officially registered to vote. Um, um, And for a long time, um, for several years, um, I was one of those people that only voted every four years. Mm -hmm. The one that voted for the president, because that to me was the thing that was quote unquote important. in recent years, um, as a homeowner, by the way, today's the anniversary of that. Um, Yay. Uh, Happy home anniversary. Yeah. Um, I have learned very quickly, because <laughs> you get fucking everything when you're a homeowner. Um, you get all the, all the, the advertisements and everything. Um, I've gotten so many texts. Um I I have to pay attention. Um, just for its and giggles, there's 
you know, you know, one of the big things that laws will say here in in Ohio, um, or at least in Hamilton County, is like, you know, this thing won't raise your property taxes, and it's very it's weird to think that, but yeah, that is something to think about and consider for me as a homeowner because raising property taxes is a potential cost to me. Mm-hmm. Is it usually a lot? Not always, but you know, depending on what it is, it has the potential. And if I am barely making ends meet and I own, happen to own my home, mm-hmm. that's something I have to take, I would have to take into consideration. You know, I can't do this law because if it raises my property taxes, um, I may not be able to afford my home. So, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a thing. It's a, it's a right. potential. And, and what you're bringing up, Damon, I think is important because you're like, well, you know, is it mattering? Maybe, maybe not. And I'm like, baby, a 0.1% tax increase plus another 0.1 plus another 0.1 plus another 0.1, like over time, mm-hmm. will add up. Oh, yeah. And, and I think that's what this whole, you know, thing swirling around is, is like being being engaged. I think greatly the American society has been disengaged for a very long time, decades. Mm-hmm. And like this is some of the after effects of that. I admit like I was not necessarily one. I don't think I necessarily voted until I got into college and it might have been like later on. And then like and I agree with you, like I wouldn't vote in primaries. I wouldn't vote like, you know, on the off year stuff. Um, but now I engage, I pay attention. And when it comes to voting, like I try to look ahead of time about a week or so before the voting, like who are the candidates that are up? What do they stand for? What is their party affiliation? What is, you know, are they endorsed Mm -hmm. by anybody, you know, and more importantly, when we get to November outside of primary season to general election items, you know, what's on the docket? What's being proposed Mm -hmm. as a statewide referendum or, you know, or locally or whatever, nationally, whatever it may be, like, you know, and and make a decision as opposed to, which I think happens quite often, people walk in and they don't know any, hardly any names. They have no idea what any of this stuff is. And then they turn around and then they end up, you know, just making some selections. And there is one thing to be said for, like, you know, down down ballot vote, voting in terms of, like, you know, a whole party. Mm-hmm. That does save you a little bit of, like, work. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, uh, but keep in mind there's more than that sometimes that come up for it. Oh, yeah. So, um, as we're moving, I think, towards wrapping up, one of the things is um, there will be a link on our website, several links to some of the articles that we talked about. Um, but also, uh, if you go to vote org v o t e period o r g um you can find information online about uh it says everything you need to vote theoretically um it explains about like having the right to vote that there's an election uh, protection hotline um it has a counter going down to november 8th of this year which is when the national election stuff is happening but you can scroll and find out stuff about your specific state it talks about election deadlines dates rules that kind of stuff um, and you can learn more about uh, you know voting by mail, those type of things. This will not necessarily give you guidance on the issues, but at least will start you on the path to making sure that you're registered, uh, knowing what your voter ID law situation is in your area, um, polling places, those type of things. And then from there, uh, my recommendation would be, you know, do a browser search. And look online, see, you know, what the potential uh, items are that are going on, um, you know, and what who's who's running for what office, what's happening where. Um, because really, it does come down to like as much as like we we have a tendency, like Damon and I were discussing, to vote like on the presidential stuff. So much of the things that impact our actual lives happen on other levels. Mm-hmm. either locally in terms of your jurisdiction. So it could be a state tax. It could be a sales tax. It could be um, a human rights commission even existing so that you have someone to form a complaint with in case you get fired and you think it's illegal or unjust. Um, if you get evicted, um, you know, those things are kind of on a local level, but those also could be potentially on a state level if you want to see things get passed in terms of, you know, recognition. Um you know, it, it's interesting because for quite a while, the trans community was coming under fire. And as someone pointed out on Twitter, I noticed they were like, boy, that really seems to have taken a back burner, hasn't it? Because now everyone's all fired up about like reproductive rights. 
Mm. And that is simply to, to give perspective, like to give you a little bit of a view as to like something's always in the focus. Something's always like at the forefront of like the hot button issue or what people have high opinions about. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's gone. It doesn't mean that right. it's gone away. And so, you know, we we didn't even really get into this episode, but um, and that isn't meant to um, negate it or, you know, uh, say that it isn't important. But there's there's so much stuff within the ability for an individual just to authentically live their lives as they see fit. Um, and, you know, the laws that are taking place in terms of like, you know, preventing individuals from uh, doing that is another aspect of why I think it's important to be engaged um, and by being engaged is to vote. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make, make your voice heard in, in that fashion. What I would really like to see, but I, just because I could, don't have the time or patience to do it. I would never be able to do it myself. So call to action for anybody who might watch this video. Um, uh, I would really like to see a YouTube channel because a lot of people use look at YouTube that is devoted to like current elections that are going on and basically giving you a rundown of what's on the ballot. And then maybe like links to, to more broader information. Mm. Because I think you, you, doing it on YouTube would be great because it would be a, a place where anybody can access it. A lot of people, high viewership platform, um, and, and just an easier way, like for those people who are like, Oh, I need to vote, but I have no idea what's going on. They can watch a 20, 30 minute video about what's going on on their ballot. And then they'd be like that if they're, if they don't actually click the additional links that might be in the description for getting more information, they would at least have a decent idea of what's going on when they go and maybe even vote more. I don't know, but I think that would just be a really cool thing to to have have as a resource because a lot of the websites like vote.org even mm-hmm. it's looking all over and then they get if they have a like a description of the candidate and, and what they're for etc it's just long words people are going to end up tldring <sighs> but if type. you have but if you have a video some people can watch or listen and or listen to um that might help people with actually becoming more informed and maybe even more engaged if they're more informed right no i think you bring up a good point jeff and some of those channels might already exist in certain areas i don't know how refined or how far they would go um it would be interesting if if there was at least representation on the state level of what you're talking about, mm-hmm. that there was like either one channel or 50 channels, whatever the case may be, 50 plus channels. Do you know what I mean? That that represent. So, you know, that you could go there and theoretically get non biased information that's presented, um, you know, that, like, that comes forward. Think about this like as vote.org, the YouTube channel. And, and even if they do have like vote.org US for national. Uh, vote.org Texas, vote.org Minnesota, and Mm -hmm. get it down to the state level. Maybe not break it down to like locals because that would be way too much. But um, they could get just pump out a lot of content that I'm sure people would definitely be want to to see or be able to access. And, and we may not be aware of that kind of stuff. So I agree with mm. you, Jeff. Like if, if people want to comment either on the video or uh, reach out to us personally, not personally, I meant as a podcast. <laughs> um, although if you reach out to me personally, we would share it, um, you know, and we'll discuss it in a, in a future episode about what the, you know, the information is that we may not be privy to or aware of that's out there. Yeah. Mm. I just, I just want some better resources than just, Vote.org and try to read all this text and try to figure out how to navigate our website to find the information you're looking for. <laughs> right. 
I need a TLDR voting ver- version. Like, can you please give me that? That would be great. Yeah, you know all that information you provided? Too long. Didn't read it. Sorry. <laughs> but I, I think that's a real commonplace problem is, is people actually making the time and doing the work um, yeah. to, to get the information they need to and in, vote informatively instead of yeah, uh, I mean, just going to the polling place and just being like, uh, just everyone the Democrat. Uh, one, that's probably be- the be- a high point to have seen it because people actually went and voted. Uh, it's just it would be a more quality yeah. of vote if they actually understood what they were voting for. That part, yeah. That's yeah even part. if it's not like they don't know that broad details but at least get a get the gist of it Uh uh-huh and i think that's one of the reasons that makes me a little bit of a a little bit a lazy voter is the fact that's like i'm gonna vote but god i don't know anything about any of these people it's the it's (laughs) the do they do it i don't know and and that's kind of and to be blunt that is why that is that's why like it's not a lot of access. They don't want people to vote, if that makes sense. Like, you know, the fewer people that vote, the fewer voices that are heard, the easier it, easier it is to skew um, towards one side or the other. Well, I mean, I think that's one of the debates that's come up about voting is like that e- the accessibility. Mm-hmm. Like how how are you making it easy easily accessible or convenient? And I think that's really valid, you know. Yeah. I'm I'm a big proponent. I've been this way probably well since about college when I started in thinking about these things. Why isn't it a national holiday? Mhm. Mm-hmm. Now, it yeah. doesn't now, not the primary, like just the general one in November mm-hmm. whether yeah. it be a presidential year or not. I think it should mm-hmm. just be a universal holiday like a government yeah. holiday um, and make it, you know, I also think there are other things you could do. Like you could expand the accessibility, which has been rolled back in a, a lot of areas. Unfortunately, you could have mail-in voting. You could have a seven day voting like window where like you get time to be able to go at your convenience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I mean? Like there, there's just a lot of things that I'm kind of like, I really wish that yeah. were codified on a national level to give people the opportunity and to remove the barriers. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the truth. Like, I mean, that is so very true. Um, when I was, um, well, I'll put it like this. I'll be, I, I'm, I'm not, not so much now, but when I was living in my apartment, um, by myself, um, with no car, um, where my voting place was, um, moved um uh when i first moved over there it was a up the street walk that i had Mm -hmm. taken so many times before and it was easy for me to get to it suddenly shifted for one reason or another don't know why and probably um it probably gave it it moved to a uh another building but it was for the non-driver. It was a much further walk. Mm-hmm. Um, it was uh, several blocks away, and going across a major street, and then going around into an area of the neighborhood that I haven't been in. Um, so the only way I was for for those the years that I was living there and it had moved, the only way I was able to do my voting was to actually do it right after work and intentionally take a different bus Mm -hmm. to where it was closer and then walk the rest of the way. Right. And that was bothersome. I -hmm. still did it, but I was, again, I was focused on, I need to vote. Um, So I said, fuck it. Um, But, you know, I agree with you 100%. National holiday. So I didn't have, because I had to do it after work, because I couldn't do it before work, because it was it was going to be, it was 
too much time. It wasn't the vote. Uh, I think the polling places were open like at six or whatever, but it, you know, it would have meant like getting up really, really early to then take the track and do all the things. And it, that's just a lot. Right. And then having to then go to work and all that stuff. So, um, and I definitely couldn't do it like on a lunch break while I didn't work too far away from Correct. where I lived. Um, it was not a, as I get a non-driver, it was not a 10 minute bus ride. It was waiting for a bus for maybe five, 10 plus minutes, then a 15 minute bus ride. And then a walk to the place. And then I walk back to find another bus right. <laughs> and waiting for another bus and getting home. So it was, it was, it was an ordeal. It would have been an ordeal at a lunchtime, especially. So, and that's just me. And well, right. And, and you're pointing out an excellent thing, Damon, about like the, the physical accessibility of it. If you had a national holiday, if there's going to be less for the for this protection and security of voting of the of that process, you're going to make less opportunity available than give them the ability to do it, though, in terms of time. If mm -hmm. people have to go stand in line like and it's going to take six hours, eight hours, 14 hours to be able to vote because there's less voting polling places, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to cast your ballot because they moved it to the other side of town to this industrial mm -hmm. complex that doesn't have a transit system. Mm -hmm. Like, sorry, I'm just like, I'm starting to vent yeah, now. But... There's, a, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of things that there are barriers. Right. Like, like, okay, then at least by having the day off, People don't have to, one, take vacation or a paid time off in order to be able to vote. Mm -hmm. And on top of it, they then, you know, may not end up losing pay because not everyone has paid time off in the U.S. No. Or that flexibility. No. I mean, like, yeah. technically, I could take Tuesday off here if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but I have other obligations. Yeah. So that's yeah, not an I've option. Had... I've had days where, I mean, um, for the past few years, um, part of because I voting is around my birthday, uh -huh. um, I have I normally take a a week off for my birthday or around about a week. Uh, what I've been doing for I didn't do it this year, but in years past, I have taken up to the day after or the voting day off, and just you know. That way I could kind of vote at my leisure uh, mm -hmm. without having to worry about it. But I, again, I agree. I don't think we sh I should have to do that. And it's great that I have the time to the, the PTO to do that. But what if I were an hourly, like regular worker, just doing my, you know, a job like, like everyone else, you know, kind of like, like most people, that could potentially that amount of time taking it off work is money that I don't get paid to do. Right. And if you don't even make a living wage, Honey. like that, that like is another barrier issue, you know, on top of it. So you might have See, more than one job. Go. Yeah. And if you happen to have more than one job, mm. then which job or how many jobs are going to be impacted by the ability of you to be able to execute your right to vote? Like exactly. that's those are the things I think that you know are not being discussed currently, but still need to be mm -hmm. brought in, you know, up to yeah the the contemporary situation, you know. And a... I, I would really appreciate that in my lifetime I could see us advance the technology as well, because there's been you know many a discussion, and and I think it will happen eventually. I just don't know if it'll be in my in this lifetime that, you know, people have the convenience, the ability to do it securely through a technology that is accessible universally. Um, mm. I think it's Yugoslavia, I want to say. Maybe it's in Europe. I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to start speculating the country, but they have like one of the most infamously secure systems in terms of like integrity of your personal information up to and including voting. Um, they basically use the blockchain security concept um, of her. And I thought that really interesting that everybody has, you know, that built into their their process. And I was kind of like, now it took a lot of work and a lot of effort, but it makes things incredibly 
um, easy in terms of like simplicity to be able to do things. And, you know, it, it is interesting because I know this was a big debate a couple of years ago. It's like, well, if the whole world, if the whole nation can vote for the next person on American Idol or The Voice or whatever this like competition is, why can't we have, you know, that type of ability to do that in terms of our, you know, our political voice? And I'm like, hmm, yeah, interesting, interesting question. Lots of lots of challenges, lots of hurdles to be worked out. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect, but well, e- yeah. even even if with a uh, technological advancement, having just multiple different ways to vote for those people who are technical, technological, like for example, let's say <laughs> they figure out how to do a voting by an app. It registers your phone. That's connected to some personal identification with the registrar. Um, and, and when you put it in order to actually get in, you have to log in with the username, password, then multi-factor authentication, either by a text or a <laughs> authenticator app, you know, something that nice and secure to go in. So there's one way, but yeah, David might not like that method. I'm just, yeah, I, so, I, I'm, saying, I'm just putting it like that. Yeah. Like, so. So having accessibility of still having polling places where people can go, it's much easier to to get, to get through the whole like registration thing to put in your vote and everything. Still have that available to people, but people like me who are too lazy to leave the house to do it, but are savvy enough that would be like, oh, I just need to to get my phone set for this. Yeah, I can do that. I'll register yeah. on my phone or tablet or i mean even if it's just Something. a website yeah you know yeah um but still having that like different security measures in order to log in when you're doing it online but as far as yeah. i know the government's like but it's gonna cost too much money to figure out how to do that secure enough and i'm like sure that I find yeah. as a, as an acceptable spending. Yeah, I, but 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 we can spend forty four billion to buy a social media platform. Yeah, there you go. Wait, <laughs> all, all of a sudden, Mena no longer longer owns Facebook. Instead, it's the U.S. government. Yeah, and it's, then it's, when it, then you get a notification <laughs> saying, "Hey, it's voting day. Put in your vote now, securely and yeah. safety." Yeah. I agree. And I, so I was, I was kind of semi joking when I was like, Oh, I'm out when the whole like multi-factor, you know, and all that stuff. I just, I know people that would be like, right. So would I, yeah, 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 I know it's like, like, well, and, and, and your point is well taken Jeff about like the validity of options. Cause I was thinking like, well, what about persons like my father who has a disability? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, what, what about that accessibility paper forms may still need to exist. Um, you know, someone may would need to be their advocate on their behalf traveling to make their, their vote known. And that and that's the thing that I think is really missing in, in our country right now is, you know, giving every single individual citizen, every person who has the ability to vote that here's here's your here's your menu. Mm-hmm. Here's your eight different things you can do. Which would you prefer? Do you yeah. want Jeff's like, you know, technological aspect? Do you want the old school, like traditional paper method? Do you need something in between? Do you like what, like something voting from home, like vote, not voting from home, but like mail in ballots? Do you, would that be an option for you? Mm-hmm. Would you, if this is a, an option, like, I don't know how it would be an option, but like a potential phoning in possibility. I don't know how it would work, but it could potentially work. There's ways to, ways to do it. I know there's ways to do it. Um, so that could be an option. There's options available. Here are your options. Like you said, Gary, like here are your options. Mm -hmm. You get to pick what you want, what you want to do. And the other, and leaving the other ones available as a backup. Right. But ultimately leaving it down to you only vote once. There's this whole, whole big thing about like voter fraud and yada, yada, yada. And I want to just be like, we're barely getting people to vote as is, period. Let's not make it more complicated by having everything be double, triple, quadruple, like checked or whatever. Like, I don't, 
I know it's a possibility. I know things happen, and we know it's a thing that can happen. But if 2020 was any indication, it is super rare that voter fraud actually happens. Because to be blunt, people don't vote enough as it is. So why are then they going to do like, I'm going to vote three, four times? No, no, no. Well, so (laughs) so here's my thing is, like, if you're concerned about getting people to vote, turn it into a lottery. Mm. There you go. Sensitize. Besides besides the fact that people won't, that if you vote the right people in, they will will vote for the, the, hopefully, vote for the things you want them to vote for, such as, you know, your own personal rights. Um, right. Uh, I mean, like, so I, I was abused earlier because I was thinking about accessibility, like this menu of options. And I was like, add it, add it to your DoorDash, add it to your Grubhub, Jesus, like your Uber Eats. Like, like, you know, those are possibilities, which I, I'm just being facetious. But, you know, it's like if, if you could do that, but then I'm also being facetious about a lottery. But I'm like, oh, if you put a million dollars on the line, have a company said, sponsored every the person, voting. If you could, if you could say every person in the U.S. has the potential, if you vote to win a million dollars, tax free. That last part's important. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I guarantee you, people who don't normally vote would figure out a way to vote. They would, they would become engaged. They would be interested. Hello. Right, like, right. I'm setting my Uber for November eighth, <laughs> like right now. Like <laughs> you're picking me up at ten a.m. Like <laughs> or six a.m. It's opening. I want to get there right. right now. Like, and all of a sudden, Damon's like, "Jim, you're voting, right? You're voting on the eighth. You're voting on the eighth. I'm driving. You're driving. We're going. Like, yeah. <laughs> yep. What? What? In, what in a two hundred million chance or whatever of winning a million dollars? Yeah. Like, but you know. Yeah. Anyways, it would, it would, I mean, I know it's like you said, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a pipe dream. It's not really going to happen. It's not something that they would do, but it's, it would incentivize people to vote. (sighs) So that said, um, I hope this has given you some things to think about and that you want to become more engaged because that's the whole point. Uh, Find out when you can vote, make sure that you can vote. You have access to vote. Double check your voting status. Mm-hmm. Just because you voted last time doesn't mean you have the right to vote this time. As weird as that is to say, and, and that's probably not the right words, but it doesn't mean that you're registered to vote yeah. or have that accessibility. Because now more than ever, I feel like voter rolls get purged all the time. Like these things come mm-hmm. up about, well, you didn't vote in the past two years, so you're just you're not you're not registered, and it's like. Maybe they weren't able to. Maybe they were in a medically induced coma. Did you think of that? Anyways, <laughs> or maybe they just because of, you know, like the, the big thing for me will always be like we we have had a very weird few years and COVID is one of the big ones. Like this was I keep using that word, but unprecedented, precedented, you know, moment. And for many. It literally. Kept them in their homes for potentially two you know, a year or two. Right. Um, they didn't vote because they didn't want to leave the house for whatever reason. And that's fair. Um, so why potentially penalize them now when we had such a weird situation that no one knew what to do with? Well, let me and we don't know we how they per- we, and, we had a perfectly okay plan in place several years ago by a previous president, and it got thrown away. But that's just fine. Yeah. Hey, guess what, folks? Get out there and vote. Go vote, bitches! <laughs> anyway, that, that's a rant. Uh, for about what an hour and a half. Um, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Let us know your thoughts about voting. How could the voting system in the United States be improved? If you're not in the United States, how is yours better? Because I'm assuming it's better. I could be making that wrong assumptions. 
it can't really be any worse. <laughs> oh no, it can. Yes, <laughs> yeah, fact, true, 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 sorry. true. Mm. It it, mm. it could be worse, but um, I, I'm not going to use that as a. Eh, it's okay. It could be worse. I'm using that as that is that it could be worse, but it could be so much better. Yeah, I'm not living in North Korea, just for the record. Yeah, <laughs> North Korea. <laughs> Loading in North Korea. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, anyways, to contact us, go to uh, comesoutloud.com, uh, leave a comment on the blog, or shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, 60 or otherwise at 361 we'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. Give us your call outs. That, how, how would you call people out to vote? That's a, that's a question. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs All About in the appropriate place of the URL or just chat us up on Telegram at tinyurl.com slash telegram to ask CLL and join the entourage. Uh, you can find out when we're planning on recording these shows by going to tinyurl.com slash calendar dash COL and you can get various accoutrements uh, such as a uh, Defenses by Four Player Cubs Out Loud shirt and various other th- things at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, some of those designs are designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Uh, you can also join us uh, join us as a patron and subscribe to us at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and we'd love you for that. It helps out with some of the bills that we have and helps improve a few things that we're working on. And if you want to just uh, send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Amazon Audible. Rate and review us there, please. That would give us higher in the algorithm. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box at box, poppy, box, go, box, something or other. Or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, where I'm streaming Bears and Dragons primarily, and then occasionally the Final Fantasy XIV. Damon? It's, uh... Apologies. <laughs> had a, yeah, I had a burper. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as um, Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. Getty? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. I mean that. Thank you, everybody. Night, everybody. Ciao for now.